Our brains are hardwired to look for patterns and to see complete pictures. And when we can only see part of a picture, it intrigues our brains and it makes us want to stick around to see the whole thing. And this is a really powerful technique that we can use as a visual hook to capture attention and also to boost engagement, especially on our social media posts. In today's video, we're going to leverage this technique and this concept to create a captivating social media video that you can use to showcase products, to share a photo dump, or even just to create a mood board or show moments from your favorite event. We'll create a simple but stylish motion mosaic that hooks your audience and keeps them watching. And if you hang around till the end, I will show you three easy variations of this so that you can make sure it works for your brand. We're gonna start with a blank design in Canva. I'm gonna go to create a design at the top left here, and I'm gonna choose Instagram portrait size. And this is just the Instagram portrait post size, which is 1080 pixels wide by 1350 pixels high. Now you can of course decide whatever size works for you. If you're gonna do this as a reel, it'll be that size, anything that works for your usage. But I'm just gonna use this today because it gives me a nice even grid to show you how it works. Once I've got the blank page, the first thing that I wanna do is add some guides so that it's easy for me to create a grid. And I do that by going to File, Settings, add guides, and then I'm gonna choose the custom settings. I'm gonna to choose to have three columns and I'm gonna change the gap to seven pixels. Then I'm gonna to go to the rows and add four rows. And I'm again going to add seven pixels so that it's even. And then I click add guides. And now we've created the grid that we're gonna to work to. The next thing we're going to do is to add in a frame into each of these squares so that we can put a different image in each square. And I do that by going to elements, scrolling down to frames and just adding a square or rectangle frame that can be resized. I'm gonna drag it up to the corner to the first one and then use the handles on the frame to resize it and use those guides I've placed to make sure that it's the right size. Then I'm gonna just duplicate that and I'm gonna fill each of these squares on the page with an empty frame that acts as a placeholder for images. Once I've done that, I'm just going to fill each of these with an image. Now, this is obviously up to you what you use here. If you wanna promote different products or if you wanted to share a photo dump from the summer, you can use whichever images work for you. The idea is just that there's a different image in each of these boxes and we're gonna reveal them in a kind of sneaky way to intrigue people. And I'll show you how we do that in a second. I'm just gonna grab images from my brand image library and some grabs of designs that I've done in previous YouTube videos. And this is what my grid looks like. So it reflects my brand colors and I just think it's got a nice mix of different images that are intriguing, but also fit with my overall brand. Next, I'm gonna duplicate this page so that the original with those frames all filled is there for me to work with if I need to. The next thing we're going to do is we're gonna just add in a simple colored block over each of these images. You can do this by going to elements and then going to shapes and clicking on the square to add that in. Or if you'd prefer, when you're on that page, you can just hit the keyboard shortcut R and it will add a rectangle. I'm gonna drag that up like I did with a frame and just as I did with a frame, resize it so it fits over that whole image and using those grid lines as my guide. Next, I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the images. I'm going to make sure that there is a single colored block over each of these images on this grid. For my next step, I'm just gonna add in different colors from my brand color palette, choosing some of these blocks and changing their color. I've got my brand set up in my brand kit, so I could just use the primary palette from here. And when I click on any of the boxes, I can use the color changer to just change the color to another one of my brand colors. And I'm just gonna go through all of these and do that so that there is a kind of erratic grid of different colors that still fits with my brand, but that adds a bit of interest. The next step is to duplicate this slide multiple times. So I'm gonna do it six or seven times just by selecting on the slide at the bottom in this thumbnail display. I'm gonna hit Control C on my keyboard and then Control V to paste a copy. And I'm just gonna paste multiple versions of that in. Now you can use as many slides as you like and make this video as long as you want. I'm just gonna do six or seven and we're gonna make them really short so it's not gonna make the video too long, but you can play around with this and see what works for you. The next thing I'm gonna do is go back to the first slide that has the blocks on and I'm gonna delete a few. Now this I'm just doing in a really haphazard way, nothing that's planned or designed to look a certain way. I just want different images to be visible on different pages. 
And I'm going to do that for all of these pages so that there's a real sort of haphazard way that the images are shown. Now, if I go back to my first slide and I just page through, you'll see on each of the subsequent slides, it changes a little, revealing different images, and it just intrigues people and keeps them interested. And then for our very last slide, we're going to copy and paste the first slide with all of those images visible, and we're going to add that right at the end of the video. So the idea is that people will see all of these different slides with some images revealed, and then at the end they get the payoff by seeing all of them at once on that grid. I'm going to duplicate that final slide just so that I can add in a couple of branded slides at the end. And I'm going to just add a rectangle over the whole slide or page, and I'm going to make it black and add a little bit of a transparency so you can still see the images but there is enough contrast for me to add some text on it. On the first slide, I'm gonna add in some text that I want just as a sign off. And on the slide after that, I'm gonna add the same text, but I'm going to move it up and I'm going to go to my brand kit and add in my logo in a white resize it and move it towards the bottom. And then to make this a really nice effect, I'm going to add a match and move between those final two slides so that you can see the text moves up. I'm going to make it a little bit longer so it's slower. And then for the final slide, I'm going to add one of Canva's new animations to that logo. And I'm going to use the succession animation, which has an image blurring into clarity and also changing size a little. Now, if we page through, we have the images being revealed slowly one by one as these colored blocks alternate. Then we have the payoff where they see all of them. I have a slide that says, thank you for being here and then my logo comes in as the text moves up. Before I show you the final steps to really bring this to life, I am super excited to announce that my fully updated Canva course called Canva OS will be opening enrollment within the next two weeks. The content has been updated to reflect the recent Canva glow up that's gonna be rolled out to everyone over the next couple of months. And also there's some new content based on the feedback and ideas that I've got from the over 100 people who have already enrolled in the program. So if you wanna learn how to use Canva to its full potential without feeling overwhelmed, then you can go to the link that's on the screen right now or in the description below the video, sign up to join the waiting list and you'll be the first to know when our early bird discount goes live in just under a couple of weeks. Now the final thing that we need to do is to just add a bit of refinement. I could delete these first slides because I don't need them. We're gonna start with this slide, the first one that has the color blocks on. And we all know it's difficult to get attention on the Instagram feed. People scroll through so quickly. And what we're gonna do is just use a simple animation from Canva to create a bit of a pattern disrupt. It basically makes people notice it because there's something different visually. And the way we're gonna do that is just by selecting everything on this first slide. And I'm gonna do that by clicking on the page and then using Control A to select all of the elements. You can also click and drag in Canva to select all of the elements. And then I'm going to animate them and I'm going to use a very simple neon exaggerate effect. And as I hover over it, you'll see it just adds this kind of flashing effect to these images, which is what we're going to use to get people's attention. I also want to make sure that on the animation settings, it's only on enter because we don't want it to happen when it moves to the next slide. And now we just have to amend the timings. Now, the way that you can easily switch from this view with just thumbnails to a view that shows you a timeline like a video is just to go to the left here where it says duration at the bottom and click on that and you'll see instantly the play button comes up and so do all of these slides or pages and they say five seconds which is the default length so that's how long each of them is up. Now for these first ones we want it to be really quick. We want this to be something that's very sudden, doesn't give people a lot of time to view what's actually going on. I wanna make sure that the last one where they're all revealed isn't selected, just the ones where some of them are revealed and I'm gonna to go to the top here to my timing and I'm gonna change those to 0.5 seconds. We want them to be a really quick change and then it goes into a longer slide which I think I'll take down to about 3.5 seconds and then the final two slides I'm gonna make 3.5 seconds too and we'll have a look at how that works. The transitions between the first few slides, I'm not gonna add anything because I want them to be short, sharp changes. But for the final image slide reveal, I want that to come on a little more slowly. So to do that, I'm gonna add a transition. I'm gonna add dissolve. And that just means that going from this last slide where some of the images are revealed into the next one, there is a slow transition so that they can see everything. So let's have a look through this. We're just gonna hit play and we can see what this looks like.
Now we can just play around with the timings. I'm going to make those a little bit longer to 0.7. I'm going to make the first slide a little longer to one second so that we can have that animation and the full effect of that capturing people's attention. And then for these last three slides, I'm actually just going to make them 2.5 seconds. Now, if I'm happy with the timing, all that's left is for me to add some music if that works for me. Now, obviously my brand is a very minimalist kind of brand and has a specific color palette and style, but this effect can work for virtually anyone. And here are three easy variations that you can try to really make it work for you. One way to really grab attention is to use your brightest colors and images and really turn this into a social media disco ball. If you want to stop the scroll and really get people to notice you, then this is the way to do it. The second way to make this even more intriguing so that people really want to stick around and watch is to not just use the flashing color blocks, but to actually move the images around on every subsequent slide. That makes people's brains even more intrigued and they really want to see what the final picture is or whether they've missed anything. And we know nobody likes to feel like they've missed anything. And the last option is to make this a mosaic, but using just one image instead of multiple small images in these boxes. And there are a couple of ways that you could do that. You could do it by adding the same image to each of the frames and just resizing that within the frames so they're all aligned. Or you can cheat. You can just add the image as a single big background image and then use lines to create the illusion of a grid or a mosaic of frames. Then you add the color blocks over those, repeat the process with animating those, and you have a completely different feel, but a very similar effect. It could be a great way to tease a new product or a new offering, or even a block of text so that at the end, people can see everything that's there, but you tease them along the way. I hope those variations help just to give you some ideas of how you can experiment with this and really make it your own. That said, let's have a look at the finished video post. That's it folks, have fun, experiment with different formats and versions of this. Just keep creating, keep experimenting and see what works for your brand. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about how to use Canva from me, don't forget to sign up to the waiting list for the Canva OS course, which opens enrollment in just under two weeks, which is a little nerve wracking, but really exciting. Have a fabulous week and I'll see you soon.